Axons Unleashed. G'day ladies and gents, Robbie Turner's my name. Welcome to another episode of Axons Unleashed. For those watching on YouTube or whatever the video channel is that you're consuming this right now, you might see three people sitting here in a black shirt, three strapping lads. Well, two and a half if you include Luke as a strapping lad. I don't know, I'll leave that up to your uh, responsibility. Um, welcome to another episode. I know the couple, last couple of episodes, Luke, have been pretty heavy. They have been very heavy. Of which content. you were one of the um, attendees. Yeah, yeah, Tell, and it's been a couple of weeks since we did that. It has, mate. It Give has. us a bit of an insight into the, I don't know, what's been the vibe, what's been the response, what's been the um, the literally hundreds of messages you've had. Oh, mate, it, it literally has been hundreds, bro. Like, it's um, it's one of those things. It is, it's very tough getting your story out there, particularly when it's tumultuous and a bit bumpy and that, you know, in that space that I was going through. But I felt that there was a real requirement to tell that story because I, I thought I had an inkling that it might help a few people along the way. Mm. And there was just a fucking tsunami of people People that have reached out and still is and still they're still reaching out you know i got one this morning as well so you know i'm very grateful for the opportunity to be able to share that story and how many people were able to help along the way and that's so that's good. what we do go back and listen to that one team it's a fucking cracker now when we're talking about tumultuous and bumpy Normally that shit occurs when you're in the back of a chopper. <laughs> True. <laughs> and we've got uh, one of Army's ex- point? <laughs> yeah. one of Army's ex uh, helicopter pilots here join us now, fellow guy in the real estate game, Mr. Phil Game. Welcome to Axons Unleashed, my man. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome, mate. Thanks, Luke. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to sharing your story. Your sh- your story has got uh, many depths to it. Uh, we're in the real estate sector. Um, you know, we've got sort of lots of things to th- your story, my story. To the fact, fun fact, Phil runs his business with his wife who's also named Tammy. So those who've been following me for a little while, there's the fucking first thing that's been, you know, you're, springs you're also, a, you're also a glutton for punishment, mate. I was going to say, it gets very, one. very confusing at times. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy! <laughs> oh, which one? Anyway, where, where am I? Then so I'm, hang on, so, so if your story created a tsunami... What's our mind going to do then? Yeah, well, I'm well, looking forward to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what the next 50 minutes is going to bring us. <laughs> hey, so tell us, Phil, um, let's go on a bit of a journey. Um, who are you, mate? Where'd you grow up? And most importantly, I suppose, why'd you decide to join the military back in the day? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so, born and bred Papua New Guinea, uh, lived there for about 10 years, as we were talking about yeah. earlier, a bit like East Timor, really. So, uh, mate, awesome country. Uh, my parents uh, divorced when I was really young and uh, we moved back to Australia. And from there, um, in terms of tsunamis, I can really open it up. Uh, Dad remarried, mum's a lesbian. Um, really, that sort of summarises my, pam- my parents and my family. Bit of a pivot in life, yeah. It is, it is. So, um, so going through high school, you know, in that sort of era, which, God, when was that? Mid-80s, late-80s. Um, having a, a parent that's uh, homosexual, so to speak, is difficult. Yeah. So um, I wanted to leave home. So as soon as I finished year 12, I'm out, man. There's too many bloody gay people around me. And it was all very yeah. hard at the time. And I know Where it's a lot Where was this? More. Where in Australia uh, did you Brisbane. come back to? Right. Brisbane, yeah. yeah. So I went to Townworth initially and moved around a bit, but ended up in Brisbane at high school. And um, <clears throat> so leaving there, I basically went straight to uni. I said, I've got to get out of here. Um, my family didn't have a lot of money. So to me, it was all about education. Yep. Education was my key. The only way for me to get out of it is to educate myself get myself in a position where I'm not in the same spot that they are in. So it's pretty much the same, you know, ethos that you use here at Axon. Yeah, of course. You know, education is the key. So, you know, the client at the end of the day makes a decision on what they want to do and you guys are here to try and, you know, coach them and guide them and educate them on what Mm. it is. It's a fundamental difference. Literally, you and Ryan did a connection call with a young Navy couple that used another defence person in our industry and they went and bought a property with them. The property's done very well. Awesome. But by fuck did they, they, that other firm, no names, no pack drills, miss so many fundamental things which has significantly hampered and put at risk their whole fucking, you know, journey. The biggest thing for me taking that couple through that, you know, the, the I guess, ab initio parts to our educational and, and training that we go through is just the risk profile that they were under that they had no idea about. You know, it's one thing to choose the path to go down property. And that, that's one thing, great. You pull the trigger to be able to execute against, you know, your plan, whatever that looks like. But if you can't hold that property due to, to not being able to identify risk and, and mitigate and offset those risks, you're dead in the water. Like not having your insurances in place, not don't have a depreciation report yep. so you can get your tax back, like 
fuck fu- for us fundamental things, but for them that was never um, made aware, feel to your point through education, they don't know any different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. absolutely. And it was it's a little bit like the same sort of stuff you guys do. Is um, you know you never you never get taught at school offsets. How do yep. they work? You know redraws. What do yep. they do? Stamp duty. What's that? Yep. You know capital gains tax. How does that yep. work? Yep. They'll teach you how to you know cook chocolate chip cookies or something and it's like well that's going to help me in life like jesus it would be it would be handy to know what all these other things did i fucking love chocolate yeah. chip cookies oh, okay. for the record <laughs> help a bit <laughs> so, so mate that's that's gold that you um you understood the value of education very early i can assume absolutely so fro- from there i uh, i left brisbane went straight to sydney uni um i had the option of going into vet science architecture or engineering And I know they're very three, very, very random things. So I got accepted in all three. Um, I was lucky enough to do quite well at high school and um, ended up choosing engineering only because it was um, aeronautical engineering and my family's all pilots. My my, my dad's an airline pilot, so I went that way. So I did four years at um, Sydney Uni, got through the first two years and then ran out of money. Yeah, Um, right. Wasn't lucky enough to have, you know, either parents and I, I even think from memory, I'm not even sure that HPAS... Uh, not HPAS, bloody... DAS. Uh, yeah, whatever it is now that you know, provides you. And they've called it... Um, no, it's HELP now, I think. Oh, sorry, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, higher got education, got education Hex. learning. Yep. Hex yeah, stuff. Yeah, HEX, yeah, which right. is now HELP or something. Yeah. Um, I don't even think that was around at the time, so I didn't get any bloody assistance. Um, so I had a good mate, Warwick Penrose. He was um, at Duntroon, and uh, I was living with his girlfriend. I know it sounds a bit dodgy. Her name wasn't <laughs> Tammy. It was all right. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and he came around, he said, mate, I've got an answer for you, go join the army. Yep. And um, I had two years of uni left to go and, um, you know, I, I went into recruiting and I said, I want to go to RMC. And they said, no, you've done two years of uni already. You can go on a um, cadet, cadetship type program. And as an undergrad, <clears throat> you can finish off your degree and then we'll, um, we'll put you into the army from there. So that was a really the way I got in there was by default running out of money and um, probably the best thing that ever happened to me, I reckon. Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, funny. How old were you when that up? So were you 19, 20 by now? Yeah, when you leave high school, 18, 19. Yeah, it would have been about 20, I think, when I yeah. joined. So like second year, going into third year uni. So I got paid, I don't know, suddenly from getting nothing and trying to survive, I suddenly paid about, I don't know, 40 grand a year living on Randwick Barracks with a car going to uni. And I thought, how good's this? <laughs> <laughs> I have nailed it at life. <laughs> Wait, education, this is what I wanted. <laughs> so what was your actual military training then? Did you end up going the Duntroon a little bit then? Uh, so oh, what they do in the military, as you know, most of your clients would know, they'd recognise talent. And so what they did is they said, mate, most general people need a year and a half to learn how to be an officer. You're so good. You only need six weeks. So, <laughs> mate, I was just awesome. Six-week course. Uh, I was like a direct entry officer. Yeah, here's, a, here's a sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Here's, here's what you – what do you do with that? I don't know. Just, you know, just do whatever you need to around. do. Wave it around, mate, you know. <laughs> and, and when you're done, we'll send you out to the squadrons. And I went, oh, great, okay. And so I was f- completely undercooked. Yeah. I had no idea what to do. I barely marched. And they said, hey, you're a second lieutenant. There's your platoon. Go for it. Go nuts. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mate, um, where'd, you, where'd you go first then? So when um, you say out there, first platoon. Yeah, yeah. So I was uh, around with Barracks, obviously, for the last two years of uni. And then from there, went straight to Oki. Uh, yeah. So it was the Oki Log Battalion back yep. then, um, which was, you know, in support of helicopter operations sort of thing. So I was put into what they called the Lung which um, was avionics. So we had air conditioning and oxygen inside and uh, it was fantastic. Yeah, so perfect. O- Oki in the middle of summer and we go, hey, why, why is my platoon of 30 men now fucking 70 men? <laughs> 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 Where all the other bastards come from? <laughs> <laughs> Normally it's like, there's it two main reasons why men conglomerate in a region. There's a hot chick in the space yep. or there's air, air con. conditioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, there was only air con, unfortunately. <laughs> and so how long did that, that posting, was that a normal posting? You went out there for two years and sort of hung out, hung out and did that yeah 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 so it was a um i think it was actually even a four year posting like two two lots of two okay. to do there i got through the second year and i had a uh, bit of an incident so i was an engineer essentially yep. um i was a leave app signer yeah, yeah, yeah in got reality it. got it yeah uh, as an officer I, it, it took me probably two to three years to understand what being an officer in the army was all about yeah, I, I didn't get the background training of an rmc which i did want but yep. i didn't get it so i had to learn that on the job a little bit and mate i had some awesome warrant officers staff sergeants under me and i said to them hey boys i'm here to sign leave apps 
um, because I know the major above you guys is going to get the shits if I don't. And um, <laughs> other than that, can you just do what you blokes do and just make your magic and make me look fucking good? You know, like because <laughs> so so the best attitude is to not go in there like you know what you're Gun doing and here. yeah and they reckon I was probably one of their best bosses and that's because they could just run over the top of me really. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, was there a moment in your career where it was kind of like, you know? Shit, I am in the I'm in the army now. I'm in the main. I know. Yeah, when was that? When first was moment? that first moment mm. for you where you just went, "Holy shit, this is probably, actually real." Probably when I walked in RMC for my six weeks training, I just yeah. went, "Oh my god, <laughs> I've actually got to pay them time for that uni fun I had." You know, all that money they gave me. <laughs> but I did. It was it was really eye opening. And having said that, I met some you know, as you guys would know, going through RMC and institutions like that. They're like, mate, you meet friends forever. Yeah. So yeah, of it was fantastic. And. And it's funny, you joke, I was a GSO, you know, on paper. Yeah. Even though I never went to RMC. They, for some reason, Ramey put their offices as GSOs. So yeah, right. it sort of plagued me for the rest of my career because every time I wanted to go to a specialist job, they said, no, 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 you're a, you're a GSO. We're going to put you into a command role. I go, oh, I don't want to yeah. do that. You know, I haven't got the training. Yeah. yeah. All fucking leave apps. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's exactly, that's all that happened. How did you transition into them flying stuff? Oh, yeah. So that um, – what happened, I think I was about two years into being an engineer and we had a Blackhawk uh, have a tail rotor strike out in the Oakey training area. And, of course, it always happens on a Friday afternoon. Yep. Oh, yeah. The old so hand, I think, uh, yeah. hand grenade gets rolled under the toilet door. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Where I did know. you think you were going today? I oh, know, and you think, oh, I did have a wedding to go to, but anyway. No. <laughs> so, yeah, 3 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Uh, I won't mention names, but there was a particular pilot that walked back in and I said, mate, what, what happened? And he goes, well, you'll find out on Monday. I said, why is that? And he goes, because I'm going home. I've got an appointment. And I went, you what? And he goes, I'm going home. So I had to go get my major and my boss and say, what is going on here? And so he ripped him one. And it was probably that moment that I realised, you know what? I fucking hate these pilots. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. They're just fucking assholes. And, um, and they would just treat engineers and everyone like shit. And I thought, you know what? I can do your job and my fucking job better than you can. And so I applied. Good on yeah, you. And wow. it was, again something that I just did on the spur of the moment, probably thought, shit, I didn't really need to do that. <laughs> <coughs> well, we'll saw- come back to that in a second about I can do your job better than that when you started your real estate firm. So we'll come back to that Oh, later. yeah, that good. Remind me, have, remind me. It's, um, it's served you well so far. I was just going to say, it's one thing to sit in the bleachers and throw stones at somebody. That's very, very easy to do, like throw stones at the ivory tower. You're like, fuck it. I'm going to, I'm actually going to put my money where my mouth is and, and go and do your job better than you. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it wasn't so much doing, you know, like yeah, of course. doing their job better, but it was more about how they deal with people. Yeah. Like most pilots and you guys would know, they're, they're all about, it's a very self-centered, um, you know, career, I guess. You're up the front, you're in this machine, you're just operating that and you don't really seem to care too much, most of them, about what's going on around them. Um, and it has changed, I think, you know, through the years that I was there, we really tried to change and get guys on the ground as air crew with the soldiers and doing stuff with them so yep. that we had a better understanding. Yep. But early on, it was just, it was like a flying club. It was like, you know, they'd go out and do their role. And so I wanted to get involved in it, um, went down and did, uh, or applied for pilot training. Um, they said, yeah, if you're successful, it'll be a six-year return of service. I went, shit, I haven't even finished the, <laughs> the first four I owe you yet. <laughs> so, and they go, oh, no, that'll be done concurrently. And I went, oh, that's a good word. I wonder what that means. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things. Like, Luke, many of your very good peers are fantastic yep. pilots and yep. they're fucking great blokes. Yep. No yeah. no doubt about it. So, Well, that's pretty rare. Bit yeah, of a, yeah. No, well, there's a cha- changing of the guard. Yeah, so if you're is. listening to this right now and go, this guy's a fucking wanker. Why is he generalising me as like, you know, um, one of well, these, these pilots? But, I mean, <laughs> the saying comes from some. Somewhere, how do you know there's a pilot in the room? He's f- walking around telling oh, everyone, yeah, yeah. right? So at the end of the day, there has been a stigma over the years of fucking pilots being wankers, and I'm yep. really, and I'm, I know that it has changed. There's a changing of the guard. We've got a couple yeah, of clients yeah. now, separate to your friends, yep. that are fucking great guys yeah. and girls, m- mind you, that I know go to work and absolutely love their troops and their supporting and their loggies and their fucking engineers because they know that teamwork makes the dream work and but it, you can't do it by yourself anymore it is it's the way that it needs to be like you, you can't be, you can't yeah. have a capability out there that's operating in isolation because um, ultimately you know that that bird needs to fly and the way that it flies yes you operate it but it, it there's a tail end behind it you know admin absolutely. Sands, sands absolutely. one absolutely at- <laughs> sands one out the back of Oki at yeah. the moment <laughs> but, it, but it's just as good for um you know we used to try and get soldiers up with us as well yeah. to have an understanding of you know how many radios we've got going how many conversations we're having we're not talking to just you know their boss on the ground we're talking to tanks we're talking to f-111s yep. we're yep. you know in a car where you've got five radios yeah so the flying pilot would take two of them and the non-flying guy would take the other three yeah and so again it was just trying to get them to understand us but you know clearly us to understand what they're doing on the ground too so 
Um, so places like East Timor, when we went there, we had a really good relationship with with guys on the ground, not only Aussie troops, but the NZ guys as well. Yeah, cool. yeah so. You said going, going back to East Timor was a little bit like, um, you know, PNG back in the day. Like, oh, you know, like, yeah. oh that, that guy killed that guy. I'm like, yeah. That's, that's fucking what happens. No, that's, that's what happens in New Guinea. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, was just, it was a very interesting, <laughs> interesting sort of, um, um, perspective to have that. Even though yeah, you're only yeah, there yeah. to be what ten, you still remember it very absolutely. Yeah. I mean, New Guinea was probably, I reckon, maybe listed as the second most dangerous country behind South Africa. Um, yeah. And I think South Africa is still one of the most dangerous countries out there. But but New Guinea, yeah, it's terrible. The, the rascals there. If you were caught driving from the city out to the the highlands, you've got to be very careful on the fringe of the city. Um, the rules are in New Guinea, if you hit someone in your car, you don't stop. Yep. You go straight to the police station um, because they'll normally sacrifice someone to then, you know, ransack the car. Yep. Um, and they're not interested in killing you, but they will. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it's it was quite a dangerous place. So, yeah, when we went to East Timor and they said, yeah, someone's burned a village, I'm like, is that all they did? <laughs> what, why are we interested in him? <laughs> and we'd send four helicopters chasing him. I go, really? <laughs> Perspective is everything. Yeah, mate, it, it is. Uh, um, what, was, what was the highlight of your flying career? Oh, that's a good question. That's why I asked that. Um, <laughs> can I answer that by saying all of it? Like, I, yeah, what, I, I is, what, did, what did you like the most? Probably the flying. Oh, like, yeah. I just – it's something so – like being was, in the air. Uh, no, Kai, so Kai was – I started on um, CT4s in Tamworth um, and then went to Squirrels, which was um, back in Canberra then at um, Fairburn. Yep. Um, and then we almost did a downgrade from a squirrel to a Kiowa in terms of perfor- performance and power and everything. And um, so I was most of the time on that. I did a bit of time in Blackhawk and Chinook, but was never type qualified. Um, mm. Just jumping in with a QFI mate and having yep. a go sort yep. of thing. So Give it a red or go. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, I mean, the flying I, I loved and then I still got the passion for it, um, hence why... But he got mm. back into it. But, um, we'll but cover off it's on like, that, so. yeah, it's like every job. It's, it's the people, definitely. I mean, if I asked you guys, what's your favourite part about the army? Mate, yeah. to me, it's the it's friends you meet, the people. Like the machines come and go, you know. Yeah, I enjoyed flying. You know, you'd enjoy certain aspects of your roles in military. Um, mate, the friendships never go. Yep. You know, they're there forever. So they're, that's the, they're the things that are real. Yeah. That are they enduring. are. Yeah. And enduring. That, mm. That's exactly and, right. And they're the things on Anzac Day. You know, you go around Anzac Day and you meet someone you've never known in your life and he says, oh, I'm ex army. And you go, I'm army. Oh, mate, you hit it off. You just, it's, it's like you've had the same training or the yeah. same background. And yep. you understand each other. And that's where, you know, you guys are so lucky to be, in, be working with the defence community now and doing what you do because yep. they're like minded people. There's a, there's a shared experience for, you know, for all people going through the Defence Force, you know. You went through one of the training institutions. And whilst, you know, some of the training changes and that sort of stuff, the institution itself and the culture that's ingrained in you while you're at that institution is the same. And so you've got that that shared experience and, and you know, a trusting relationship that's, that's developed based off the fact that you've gone through that hardship, which, you know, for me, is, yeah, it's one of those yeah. things that, that is absolutely RT, like you said before, it's enduring. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's probably a really roundabout way of answering your um, favourite right. part of flying. How long, but, uh, how long did you end up staying in the military? Um, 15 years. So, so when did you get out? Yeah, as soon as my Rosso ran out. <laughs> <laughs> Concurrently. I, I, yeah, I had to – well, I ended up wanting to – um, so I, I flew um, – so I did my flying training, went to Oki, back to Oki again. Oki is like the epicentre for aviation. Yeah. So wherever you go, you end up a rubber band back to – or a boomerang back to Oki. So yeah. I went up to Townsville. I served in Townsville for four years, which encompassed uh, East Timor, Sydney Olympic Games – um, some awesome flying in both of those locations. Great people as well. And then back to Oki, I wanted a respite posting, so I became a QFI. Um, and that was to just give me a, a break away from the deployments. Yep. Um, so my Tammy um, and I had met when I was on initial pilot training. And so she wasn't a real fan of Army, but um, but she knew it was it was what it was. It yep. um, so I said, well, how about I get a respite posting, you know? And so the respite posting was a cure fired yep. Oki working six days a week. <laughs> and so it was really good. So, <laughs> Excellent. So anyway, so I did finish that. And then because of my engineering background, um, I was pretty well – I was very interested in doing test flying. Um, so you'd go to either uh, the UK or the US, so either Pax River or uh, Empire Test Pilot Training. And that was something that I thought, oh, how good would that be? Like, astronauts come from there. That's got, <laughs> that's got to be good. Anyway, so the day that my wife said, nah, it's over. You're leaving. I went, okay, no worries. I handed in my discharge. And I said, do you want to go to um, – any chance you want to go to the US, to Pax River? I went, oh, my God, I'd love it. <laughs> the carrot. Dangling oh, the no. carrot. As soon as you put in the carrot. discharge. So anyway, I had to say no because it was another – I think it was another five years Rosso. And I went, oh, my yeah. God, I'll be in here forever. I'll be yeah. bloody – be like you, Blake's old. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we're not old, we're just older. <laughs> wise. I, I like to use the term wise, mate. So <laughs> seriously, was it a um, sort of joint decision by the family to say, Phil, I reckon you've had enough of your career now? Yeah, it was. It was It was mine as well. It was it, it was hard. It was one of the hardest things. I, I gave them about a year's notice. Um, so as we were talking about before with, you know, just looking after people, I said, listen, I want to get out. And they said, oh, mate, we've got no QFIs here. We're trying to run courses. And I said, right. When, do you, when can I go? And they said, maybe the end of the year. And that was in a January. So I said, righto, January next year, I'm going to discharge. You've got plenty of warning. So the whole year went. They didn't do anything yep. as they never do. Um, and I got to January and I said, hey, I'm leaving. Yep. And they go, what do you mean you're leaving? I go, well, hang on, whoa, let me pull up the email yeah. I sent you a year ago. You know, yeah. And they go, oh, okay, that was a bit of a shock. And I went, righto. So yeah. anyway, I said, no, I am going. And that's when the, um, the commandant at the time said, yeah, well, do you want to do test pilot flying? And um, so I d- we had to really think about it. I took it home to my wife and... The, the issue that I'd had is that I'd had a year preparing to leave, so I'd had so many plans in place, and mentally I just don't think I was um, really ready to do it. Had it been earlier, I probably would have taken it. But, yep. um, so, yeah, we made a decision as a family. No, we wanted to – I had two young kids then, two under two. Um, ended up with four under six, so oh, maybe I should have oh. gone to Pax River. Might have only stayed with two. Or bought a TV, mate. Oh, that's all <laughs> <laughs> I think I oh, two under two, mate. Oh, yeah, four. Yeah, fucking Fuck. hell, right? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, busy, busy times. I know. It's like it's like being a bloody officer in the army again. It's like four under six, but they don't listen. <laughs> Why well, you kids not listen to me? <laughs> so you, so you've taken your pivot. You've, you, the hammer's dropped. It's time to go. Where did your path start to take you then? Ah, yes. So it's and probably every defence member and. You know, everyone that's listening and everyone that will listen um, has the same dilemma. At some point, you think, I'm going to probably leave the system. Yep. And what do I do? And and that was a hard one. So stepping back a little bit, I actually went and did a Master's of Business while I was in East Timor. Okay. So I did it by correspondence. So it took me three years through Uni of New South Wales. So that was, in theory, going to set me up to get out. So I had a Master's of Business, an engineering degree, and absolutely no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I... At the time, I was leaving, um, one of the colonels out at Oakey said to me, have you got any thoughts? And I said, I don't know. I just can't do it anymore. I can't go away. And he said, well, we've got Tiger coming in. Um, you know, you were going to be one of the QFIs on that, but instead of that, would you like to be an engineer on it? And you can go work for, as a contractor, come in and give us a hand. So I kind of thought, well, that's a pretty good stepping stone. Maybe I'll do that. So I did 12 months of uh, Project Peregrine, which was yep. the introduction of Tiger. What a disaster. Anyway, I'm glad I only did a year because uh, we told them they were 10 years late. No one ever listened to us, so, yeah. oh, so I left. It's so. funny, as um, running the JTAC capability for SOCOM, I was really looking forward to having an Apache-style so, yeah. helicopter come on board to just provide that sort of close combat attack, but it just never really turned out that um, way. Like no, it was you, were about, <clears throat> you were about 15 years ahead of your time, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we, d- we did some pretty cool joint missions, artillery round, firing a mark, Jets coming in, fucking dropping bombs, helicopters coming close, like, and just really, really coordinating the synchronicity of the, the joint firepower effects there. And we did it a yeah, few right. times, um, but it was always fucking something wrong. Yeah. There's always yeah, serviceability yeah. issues. There's always, a, like, it just never really got any traction. I think it started out at around $90,000 an hour to run. So um, like being here at Axon. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, I'll tell you what, the way Luke eats, I can see why. <laughs> But I guess um, that would have been exciting at first, but as I just heard in your voice, then like when something becomes oh, a di- when mate. something with such potential turns out, it turns out to be a disappointment. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And the problem is, you've got politics and contractors involved, and there's big money, and yeah. so no one was ever going to listen to you know little me saying you know, and with my colonel, the two of us saying, "Hey, it's going to be delayed. There's going to be huge issues." They go, "Well, we don't care." <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, so I, I did the end of that year, and um, and I was with another company, um, you know, investing. So I guess a similar story to you, Luke, in yeah, terms right. of being a client and then um, and then moving in. So, so there was a company, and I won't you know go into names or anything, but um, I invested through them, and then they said, well, if we were to you know match your salary that you're on, would you consider coming and working for us? And um, they were based out of Sydney, and I said, yeah, that'd be that'd be a great idea. Um, so that's that. I suppose that was my first big step where I was going away from everything I'd ever done, and yep. it was a step into property. And I, I then decided I was going to do my financial planning. Uh, diploma at the same time. Good on you. So I went in with them for a year. I did the financial de- diploma, which back then was like, I don't know, 
three days, maybe four at best. <laughs> <laughs> Literally a I box, think, box yeah. a little bit like your bloody ab, ab initio training in the military. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A box, yeah, box ticking it. exercise. Well, so fucking, you're exactly. now qualified. I, again, they recognise talent. They just said, well, fuck, <laughs> mate, yeah, this yeah. bloke, he, he only needs four days yeah, to learn yeah. this shit. <laughs> instead, instead of a sword, they just gave you a pen and a calculator. Yeah, exactly. that around, mate. Whereas now I think it's a four-year degree or something. Yeah, I'm like, oh, my yeah. God. So, But, yeah, so I'd, I got that and I was actually doing um, essentially property coaching, yeah. um, but I had a financial planning background, so I was helping them with, you know, offsets redraws you know all the stuff around it essentially so <clears throat> worked for this company for you know 12 to 18 months and then yeah saw things i you know didn't really need to see oh it mate it's it just worked out to be a natural it wasn't the right fit for you absolutely yeah. you yeah, know yeah, i guess yeah. you had one of those moments i'm like you know what babe you just tammy babe you're tammy babe, oh, not my babe. <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> no you're like hey i think you said you know babe i reckon i can do something i reckon we could do something like this similar yeah so good Absolutely. on you, mate, that you had that sort of, you know, had yeah, that crack yeah. to go and do it. Can I just take a step back to your, no. your ultimate trend, please? <laughs> please. <laughs> this is Luke's, our show. Luke's oh, very, oh, hang on, okay. Right very on. passionate about transition, so I, I don't know what he's yeah, going to yeah. ask you, but... Yeah. Most people, when they transition, they go in one of two ways, right? So it's from my, you know, experience and, and being pretty close to it at the moment, people always kind of, they're, they're happy to transition and they want to make that complete cut and that's it, or they want to kind of hold on to that, you know, hold on to that defence yeah, environment, yep. that defence community. That and you know, you kind of did that going back and doing a contracting job, but when you decided to to take a step into property, were you very much like right defence chapter closed, new chapter open, or was there still a little bit of lament there for you? You know, kind of, I could have done this, I could have done that. Mm. Yeah, there's there's still that. Um, it, it's hard. I don't think I ever drew a line in the sand and said that's it. Yep. Um, and I'll allude to it when I then started my own business. I nearly ended up back flying again. Yeah, right. Okay. So it was always in the back of my mind. It's almost like a, you know, like a nice big pillow. Yeah. You think, you know, if I need it, it's there. So I left on really good terms. Um, yep. As I said, I gave them a year's notice. Yep. I, I did everything that I should do by the book. And I knew that if I rang one of the colonels and said, I want to fly again, they would have taken me yeah. back. So You call it the bosom of ADF. Yeah. Oh, the bosom. Yes. Oh. Like Romulus which, on the, which, the wolf. Which Tammy? Better than a fucking <laughs> – better, better than a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> the bosom of the ADF. Uh, Albanese's bosom. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Elbo, uh, thank you for your support too, mate. I know you're yeah. listening in. <laughs> so, yeah, so in answer to your question, it's – I don't think – well, I, maybe some people do cut it off that – Maybe who've had a bad experience yeah. or, you know, and they just say, hey, it's not for me and they're out. But but I know I certainly had always thoughts in the back of my mind. If things don't work out, I could go back. Yeah. And I really wanted to hold the friendships and that. So I was constantly in touch with yeah. all the guys I served with yeah. um, all the time, you know. I was going to say, as and as you, as you did sort of, um, you and Tammy did take that plunge to go, all right, I reckon we can do this ourselves. Like what I did, you effectively reach out to all those, like when the name goes out, you're like, all right, cool. Hey, team, I'm now helping people in the property space a lot of your friends then sort of go, hey, fuck, I know you, I trust you, yeah. can you now help me yeah. do that stuff? It's literally happening to us. Right now. I've been out 10 yeah, years and yeah. I'm literally coaching another guy tonight that I did my commando selection with 20 years ago yeah. and he's now come back to me and goes, hey, man, I want to buy a property. I'm like, no worries, I'm happy yeah. to here, here to help you. So yeah, that's a really yeah. great part of the military is that you just have that deeper level of trust. Like, this is the thing, and you heard me talk about this a lot before, when people are buying six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000 assets – and it's, you know, they're going through the build process and they need all the coaching and the guidance and the sort of the support behind them. And it might take a year, a year or 18 months to do. And we're flirting with people's financial futures. The stakes of the services you are providing could not be higher. Yeah, and absolutely. if you fuck that up, then one of your mates is going to have a shit retirement. Yep. Like, that's the way I think it of is, it. It is, absolutely. Like, even though we put our heart and souls into coaching every single one of our clients the same as I'm sure you do, when it's one of your mates or your family members, you like pray like fuck that it's going to yeah, go through yeah, even yeah. more yep. because you but don't just lose a client that you've never didn't really know before. You lose someone you're very close with. Love and care, yeah. Yeah. and, and, yeah. and you have you, to be. Yeah. Well, you have to be really careful. It's a double edged sword, isn't it? Mm. Like if if one of those because you're such a tight knit community and, and the guys that you're actually you know coaching and working with, if one of them has a bad experience, they just tell the rest. Yep. So it's in your as a company, like I was the same. You just think oh, I've got to do the absolute best by these people because they all know each other. Yep. And so there's no way in defence of getting away with like oh, I'll just do someone else. like you know what it was like even in the army if yep. if someone on an exercise did something wrong, everybody knew about it. Mate, <laughs> you steal someone's slice of the uh, of the cake, the pudding in the in the five man rat packs. People know about it. <laughs> well, f- five rat, <laughs> rat packs. We're in a you mess know. having dinner all the time. What's a rat pack? Who's a pilot? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but good on you, mate. It, it's, um, yeah, tell us about those early, early days well, of business. Yeah, so um, going back to what you just mentioned as well, it's it's hard to 
almost uh, not re-identify, what am I looking for, but um, rebuild yourself in a different role as sure. well because yeah. a lot of the people that you know, like for me anyway, they will go, oh, that's Phil, you know, the guy we flew with in the army. And mm-hmm. I, I spent 10 years as a pilot. Rebrand yourself. Rebrand, I guess, is, is a good terminology. Yep. So so in all of the people that knew me in defence, I'm a pilot. Yep. I'm a military pilot. That's And, you know, and yeah, I was, I was on OPSO and so on and different other things. But to then come back and then say, hey, I'm – you know, I'm a financial planner now and I can give you some advice around your property stuff. That takes a little bit of time for people to go, hang on, well, you now know his property, does he? You know, like, and, and as much for me, it was no big step because I've gone and done an engineering degree and then a master's of business and then a diploma. It didn't really, to me, it was just another stepping stone, but I could really, it took me a while to get people to really appreciate um, and you may have found the same yep, is that for sure. rebranding type thing as to who you are. And, and now, you know, 10 years in or whatever, it's, it's no big deal because you've got a history and, and you've got a backing there. But, um, but those early days were tough. And even though I was with another company um, before I then went out on my own, um, yeah, it was still tough because people would go, huh? wasn't he a pilot? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, mm. uh, it's yeah. a really interesting little activity. I mean, you're going through it right now. I, in my head, yeah. I was literally thinking about a. I, I, I coached or had a chat to one of to one of my best mates last night, who's who's thinking about jumping, you know, delving back into property. And one of the things that he sort of said towards the end of the call was, "Mate, you're the SME in this industry now. You, I'm, you know, I'm happy. I trust you. I know you. I care for you. You care for me. But you're the SME in property now. And that was something that really warmed my heart. That was exactly what you were talking yeah. about because it's a journey, mate. Like like you said, you've got a brand as a human when you're going through the defence force. Whether that's you know bloggy, whether that's a commando, whatever that looks like, that's what people know you as. But Absolutely, then to jump yeah. in and be the be the professional, the SME in the space of property, it's a real kind of real leap. Yeah, absolutely. And and so then that leap, you know, as you would know as well, you go from working for someone for 12 months doing it and then literally out on my own. Yep. And um, so I had no support around me and I'm like, whoa. Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know about that yet. No, no. You, oh. Oh. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it first here, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, at it's least. It's all right, Luke, give me a call when you're ready. No. <laughs> it's all right. Hey, at least someone gave me a fucking heads up this time. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, the feel the analogy I use, mate, is that when you do decide to start your own business, you grab all your chips in life yep. and you just fucking put them in the middle of the table and say, yeah, yeah. let's play. Well, I was, I was going to say, resonate with yeah, you? geez, yeah. And uh, if there's any advice I could give to you, Luke, don't do it. No, I'm not, mate. I'm <laughs> sorry, we are not a... So I'll, I'll share something with you that um, is probably the closest... And, and don't get me wrong, I, I fully support, you know, uh, mental, you know, problems that people have. I don't really understand it. Yep. But the closest I've been was starting my own business. Yep. Um, and I would never, ever think to take my own life. And I've lost some good mates. Steve yep. Faisal was one, was a pilot with me that hung himself in Townsville. Uh, Matty Feather overdosed. Um, so I've lost two pilots that I flew with yep. from that. And I... I just don't understand it. Yep. I don't understand how you'd want to do that. So they must be in a really low place. It's a com- complex to do that. Beast, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, but that first twelve months of me going out on my own, the salary stopped. Yep. No money's coming in. Everything stops. Everything. It's I know. Fucked. I so assure I've, you. At that stage, I've got three kids under three. Yep. My wife wants a fourth. Yep. I'm like, I can't even think about how I'm putting bread. On the table. Yeah. I've just realised why they didn't have a TV. <laughs> That's it, yeah, yeah. No, but I had three by then. No. <laughs> but no, no, this is a really powerful it story. Is, it thank, is. Thank and you for sharing. No, 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 all good. And it's, Keep um, going. it's, it's one of those things that, as I said, I'm, I'm not trying to take away from it, but it was my lowest point, I reckon, yeah. in my life is basically crying myself to sleep. I had no thoughts of ever ending my life, but I was in a really low place. Yeah. And, and I remember thinking, my God, I'm going to have to go and join the army again. Yep. And it, there's a little bit, even though I'd left the army on such good terms, knew everyone, they would have welcomed me back. I'd only been out for like two or three years at that stage. It's still an element of, oh my God, I've got my tail between my yep. legs yep. and I'm walking back in the door that I wanted to leave, you yep. know, and it's, it's a pride thing. Yeah, there was, And so not. that was playing on my mind. The fact that I hadn't been, hadn't earned a dollar in about, seven months was playing on my mind. We'd rip through all our savings. We'd build up five investment properties. I was down to two. Yep. I was selling them off. I, you know, well, it's, Lucky you it's had hard. them. Yeah. Otherwise, know, that's another reason. Why, and we speak about it all the time. Like, fucking do something with your future as soon as you can. Absolutely. Because shit can change. That's life circumstances can change down the track. And if you don't have assets under your belt, you back yourself into a corner real quick. Yep. Absolutely. So, it was the best thing I did back in 2000, I think it was, getting my first property. Yeah. So, and then oh, I'm my second, then my third, yeah, yeah. So, um, but 
Yeah, so it was probably that lowest moment, and that's why I'm, you know, joking. If you're going to do it, come and talk to me because, <laughs> no. mate, he, you'll, you'll need some support around you. <laughs> he, here's something interesting, and this is um, maybe a question that someone hasn't asked you before. Um, my circumstances were that there was no going back to the military, ever. How could it, I want? I'm just curious to know that if that bosom wasn't there for you, what? How would that have made you feel? Oh, mate, would have been yeah. Devastating beyond belief. Like yeah. I, I still remember um, literally crying myself to sleep. I didn't want my wife to know. So she'd be downstairs doing something and I'd be just bawling and then yeah. I'd fall asleep, wake up the next day and go, right, harden up, go again. You know, you've got to go out, you've got to fly around, you've got to speak to people, you've got to build this business, you know. And, and Grind and, and hustle yeah. and oh, grit and grow. Oh, and oh mate. And, and to, to know, I knew at the end of the day my last thing was I could say to her, hey, it's just not working. And she would have supported me to the hilt as your Tam would, I'm sure. And... And I would have said, I'm going to go back, we're going to Oki and we're going to go do it. And she wouldn't have cared. She was more about lifestyle yep. and just, you know, the kids and family. But um, if I didn't have that, that's a tough question. And, and yeah. maybe that would have put me in the space that, you know, my good friends were in that have, yeah. that have taken their lives. You know, yeah. I, I had that backing where I thought, you know, I've got that as that last resort yep. if I need it. Um, but I tell you what, I got very close to it. Mm. I reckon I was within about four weeks of picking up a phone and saying, are there any jobs yeah. as a cure fire, Oki? Because <laughs> <laughs> this for property me, thing's not working real well. <laughs> for me personally, um, it was a burn the ships moment. There was no going back. Yeah. There is no inter- yeah. al- alternative. Like you just fucking grind and make it – you just make it work. Well, yeah. hats off to you because I would say you've done it tougher than me because – Oh, there's no – no. everyone's on their own journey here, mate. I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm, I know. But no, I'm, I'm not meaning that in a um, you know derogatory or compl- uh, complimentary way. I'm just saying it's uh, – I, we both know what it's like. It's mm. um, it's not fun, and and there's some great rewards at the other side of it though um, when you get through. But I think what are the stats? You know, two uh, no eight out of ten small businesses yeah. fail within yeah. the first twelve months. Yeah, well, I was pretty close to one of them. Yeah. Um, Tell me because I know something else we share is having our our um, wives work in the business with us now. When did Tammy join? Like, when did you start to get a little bit of traction and go, fuck. Um, all that work and all that grit and grr and determination. And like uh, one of the things that, is, that has saved my bacon and allowed you to be working in everyone yep. else right now is the military taught me one thing, and that is to fucking win. Yep. It's just, yeah, just not yeah. lose. Yep. Right? Wherever you can, is that you just put your blinkers on and go, I'm going to fucking win here. I'm not, not, not beating anyone else, but this endeavor that I've now undertaken, I must yeah. fucking make it work. <laughs> and you do whatever, it ne- whatever needs to be done legally, morally, ethically to fucking get that done. Yeah, right? absolutely. Well, you've got to sacrifice so much yourself. But as you rightly yeah. say, when you do pop out the other end and you do crack the code, fucking life, I would not fucking change this for the world. You couldn't yeah. pay me enough to go back and do it again, yeah. but by, yeah. <laughs> and good luck to those who have done that recently. But but it's a it's a business. Would you agree? Phil takes a lot of your soul before it gives a tiny bit back. Yeah, it does. It's. I reckon we're only oh, what are we fifteen years in, and I would argue that it's only been the last few years that I haven't had to really worry about. Right. how the business is running and where the money's coming so from. So even though I've yeah. been out for 10 years, and as you know, I work with another firm for three and a bit years, so Axon's only nearly seven. So you're double, you're, yeah. you're 100% just, further down the track than me. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a huge it's, thing, mate. I think Luke and I were just talking about it before. I'm s- slowly getting to the point where I'm saying, okay, I'm taking every Friday off. Yep. I, I need yeah. a, you know, I need a lot We work half day Fridays here. If you're wondering yeah. why I don't answer your call on Friday, I'm not fucking here. <laughs> so <laughs> how come you don't answer it on Tuesday? Yeah. <laughs> And Wednesday. No, no, no. Oh, so absolutely. Back, so back to the point oh. of when, when did, when did Tammy, oh, Tam, Tam yeah, come yeah. aboard? Mate? Hey, so if I answer that question, you've got to answer mine then about how your Tam came on. No. Sorry. She was there no. from the start. We oh, literally, okay. she went and bought the $50 whiteboard off Gumtree and we created the business together from fucking Ooh. scratch okay. the, that day. Until yeah, you right. sacked her though, mate. Let's be well, That's uh, let's another be podcast. Transparent. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, my wife's been wanting to get sacked for about five years now. She goes... <laughs> Can, can you just get rid of me? And I say, there's nothing to get rid of. You're not getting paid, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. <laughs> You're not an employee. You don't get super, so stop annoying yeah. me. <laughs> that, yeah. Tam's only been paid as an employee with super for the last two years or so. Yeah. So she, she no, ran, my, my she Tam ran gets nothing. nothing. So, no, how, so how it happened, I was um, essentially a one-man band, um, which is where I take my hat off to you guys as to how you've set up and run. So I was, you know, a, a laptop and a mobile phone and – and that first 12 months that, it, you know, was crying myself to sleep was literally travelling around Australia, doing some seminars, catching up with mates and giving them help. And like you, my morals are to the point I would never force someone to buy or do anything for my own yeah, gain. Of course. But I would certainly be trying to say, hey, what do I need to do to, you know, find that next sale? But, you know, I'd just go home and go, well, if then it's not good for them, it's not good for them. And, and that was difficult. But um, so once I then got running and, you know, a few sales were coming through and, and things were starting to go on the up, 
we it got to the point where you know I'd sort of had maybe 80 90 100 sales over you know probably a period of two or three years where the business was steady but it was still a difficult business to manage and move on my own so there was a few things I was looking for one was almost a recurring income where I could create something and whether it was through brokering I had heaps of different ideas to try and do that um, and then the other one was I was getting almost a day a week where I was dealing with property management issues from my 60 to 80 to 90 clients that yeah, were now out yep. yeah so they were either with Ray Ward or Jack or all the brand names mm-hmm. whatever um, and I thought hang on I'm spending a day a week dealing with this and then those guys get the money and so I'm answering fencing problems and all sorts of issues, just the day-to-day stuff yep. with rentals. That's yep. just what it is. Because these people that, that know you and trust you. Yeah, they, they do. So they you. come back to you and they ring you every time. And, and mate, I love that. I'd never yeah. change it. Um, but I then thought, well, hang on, there's a business opportunity. Why are they with other people? So that's where I brought my Tam in. So she was a scanner. She did ultrasound at the hospitals. Um, so she used to scan herself all the time and say, I'm pregnant again. I'd go, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so... So that's how I knew just, so just early. Just to scare you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I thought if I can get her out of that career, that'd be really good. She might stop getting pregnant. So I don't think it was the career choice, mate. Oh, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, right. So anyway, so she, she, um, she said, why not? You know, we'd had our fourth at that stage because the business was running enough. So I've got three under three and then it took me three more years to have the fourth. And everyone goes, oh, why were you unsure? And I go, no, I'd started a business. Yeah. yeah. So that's why the gap. That, that was your baby. Yeah. That's, yeah. And I just didn't, I, I couldn't see myself supporting the three I had, let alone another. But once we got up and running, we had a fourth that we always wanted, um, got going, and then Tam hadn't gone back to work. So I said, instead of going back to work as a scanner, how about you be a PM? Mm. Um, and it was exciting. She, you know... PM she, meaning property manager. Property manager, manager yeah. yeah. Sorry, not the I PM as in... I know we're talking <laughs> about Albanese before. <laughs> yes. but, um, That's two. That's two. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so she got involved. We, we started managing the, the 50 or 60 that we had, and, you know, we've essentially grown it to close to 600 today so, so good awesome. so yeah so that was it was really good and it gave us i guess that that rounded business feel and so that's how well i guess we've then grown with my tam and myself working together now even though we're together i've always been sales centric um so i do all the you know the sales now for clients you know reselling or you know that have made heaps of money and then moving on or whatever that is you know buying their own home yep. whatever um and tam runs pretty much our property management side of it so i I do all the figures, but I keep out of the day-to-day management. So. It's definitely one of the key things that me and my Tamara have met. You, you, not even in Tamara, but you get the picture. Well, mine's a Tamitha. Fuck me. There you go. I know. So right. Tamitha did it, did and Tamara. Did her parents not like her? I don't know. Was, <laughs> I said, I said, isn't it Tabitha? And she goes, no, no, it's Tamitha with an M. And I went, oh, no, it's tab, no, it's Tabitha with an M. Is it? Yeah. Anyway. Oh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you, lovely girls. Um, the, point of the, the case of the point here is um, – Provide, give, give yourself lanes as soon as possible oh, yeah. and stay the fuck out of everyone else's yeah, lane. Yeah, yeah, Don't I, Daniel, you're behind. I get smacked on the fingers almost daily because I'm a very <laughs> forward leaning sort of, you know, business owner. Really? And yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm always fucking trying to help everyone no matter what. She's yeah. like, yeah. That's, stay out of your lane, champion. Yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> what, what year did you pivot? Like, you know, obviously the, you, the Astute was focused on, you know, the, the sales side of the house and, and you know, yep. working towards acquisition. What year was that realisation of Pivot where you went, hang on, there's actually probably more legs in this for me to go down this yeah, path. Yeah. And us to, what, what year was that? To give it us an kinda, understanding. Yeah, of, it kind of just happened. And what, what happened over time? So it was probably about five years ago. I think the start of COVID. Yep. So was that five years? Ah, probably about that. Knows. Something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> it's like a blur. COVID was 2020. Because remember, COVID nineteen was it originated and it hit us. I was in probably a touch twenty. Maybe it was a touch before then. I was down in the so bloody. I was d- down in Melbourne trying to watch the start of the F one, and half the fucking drive, half the drivers flew back to Europe and went. Well, that's not happening. <laughs> so that was it. Feb, Feb twenty twenty. So you watched the, the F half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. So <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like it. <laughs> so probably um, yeah, four or five years ago. I just found that there was more – because we had such a large rent roll, there was a lot of our clients saying, well, how much is my home worth now yep. um, and can you sell it for me? So I ended up – it wasn't really a conscious decision. I just ended up finding myself selling houses and I didn't have as much time to help investors yep. with houses. So and that's where, you know, two or three years ago that Robbie and I sort of then got together and I thought, well, hang on. I'm not really doing any of that investment stuff, really. I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on the sales and the rentals now. Yeah. So, so we sort of moulded, I guess, four or five years ago into a 
traditional real estate office. Yep. Um, but we, we're not an LJ Hooker. We're not a Ray White. We're not the big brands. We can do whatever we want. Yep. We're not held by, you know, a franchisee's rules and regulations. Um, so it's a fantastic place to be. Um, it's We've sort of ended up there by default. Yep. But it's fantastic because, you know, we're own branding. As long as we comply with, you know, the RTA and the acts, um, we can do what we want. Yeah. So I remember that meeting um, very well. We'd just been let down by one of our big property management firms and they were going through a software rebrand and it was just fucking very, very clunky. So I started to get a bunch of complaints coming through the build support team. I'm like, right, this is not fucking working. So we literally transferred probably 200 clients across to another firm and I reckon we sat down the week after. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> and I was like, you're like, hey, I'm like, oh, fuck, man, I'm so sorry, but uh, I, I've just transferred a heap of clients which, over there. Which yeah. didn't matter. And, and, and as you we've... took it so, to your levels of professionalism. Oh, yeah. You didn't crack the shits or anything. Nah. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. To me, as we've always talked about, it's the same as coaching a client. It's a 20-year, it's a long-term it is, thing. Mate, yeah. And so, you know, catching up with you that day was not about, you know, what I could gain that day. It's about what I what can we help each other with over the next 15 years. Like, unless you're planning on being out earlier, which maybe you will be, but it's – um, it's it's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to get rid of him? <laughs> like, I, I just get rid of him. Luke knows people that can off me. <laughs> I don't know that I could put up with the – what do you call it? Attention deficit syndrome or something? Yeah, what between, the two yeah, between the two of us, mate. We've been sitting oh, we've Jesus got Christ. <laughs> No, no, wonder, it is, no, again, wonder, no wonder I've got a different logo on here. And like. it is like what it is, you f- you found your niche and you went, this yeah. is what I want to oh, focus absolutely. on. You know, and I'm very, very proud to say now that Axon and Astute are doing business together. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you've been able to sell a few properties for our clients. There's yep. a bunch of property management that occur. There's yep. more coming through. So, no, it's, it's really, really great that, again, veterans helping veterans. Yeah, absolutely. And and that was my intent from that meeting was to look at a long-term thing. And so when you'd said, oh, mate, you've just missed, I just moved 200, I went, yeah, doesn't matter. Let, let's talk long term. You yeah. know what, what can we do to help each other? So, I mean, the focus from us and from you guys is all about the client. Yeah. At the end of the day, and if you make it about that, you'll be here in fifteen yeah. years. Yeah. Absolutely. The day you don't, then I'll be back flying choppers. And well, I was just a good little segue because you are back flying choppers oh, yeah, now, yeah. not for the military, but just take us on that little journey because yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, go for it. Uh, well, again, I think it was about probably three years ago. Now I woke up. And um, I said to poor old Tam, she's copped a lot of this all the time, probably like your Tam. And I said, I yep. think I'm going through a midlife <laughs> crisis. And she goes, oh, shit. Again? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's my fourth. Yeah, I know. And I said, but, and she goes, is it a woman? I went, no, it's not a woman. Is it a car? And I said, no, it's not a car. I hate cars. And I said, but I want to go flying again. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> And I go, would it have been better being a woman? <laughs> and she's sort of like, yeah, probably. But anyway, so – and so she gave me some strict criteria. She said, you are not touching a cent of my children's and my money for you to fly. <laughs> and I thought, well, there's a fucking challenge, well, isn't there? Well, there's your, there's your lane. Fucking no, that, no that, was my, yeah, that was a very clear lane, I tell you. So, Not our money, my money. Yeah, that's exactly what she <laughs> yeah, said. Yeah. And they were her kids at that stage because yeah, yeah. I tell you what, a lot Apparently, of time at home yeah. they're my kids when they're real yeah. shits. They're always my kids. So. Your son. But at that moment they were hers and, um, and I wasn't to touch anyone's money. So – I sat there and thought, how the hell am I going to do this? I've got a fixed wing license, but it's only private, so I can't earn money from it. But I've got a helicopter license that's commercial, so I can earn money. Where the hell am I going to get paid money so that I can – I just wanted to fly fixed wing. But I needed to earn money to then fund that. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to go get a helicopter job. So essentially I approached SeaWorld about oh, three years ago, I reckon. Went in there and said, hey, boys, um, my name's Phil and I'd like to fly. <laughs> and I got the reaction you would expect. Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> great, great, great idea, Yeah, Phil. yeah great fuck idea. Off. Fuck off. Like, when was the last time you flew? Yeah, 15 years ago. And they said, no, fuck off. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it took me – I reckon it took about three months. Um, Ash Jenkinson, you know, and obviously, you know, rest in peace, he was, he was a top bloke. He was obviously killed in the accident uh, that happened what, coming up 12 months, mm. so January this year. Um, lovely guy. Had the world of time for me. Um, he's the one that got me flying. He's the one that, you know, took the time to come and have dinner with me. And he said, mate, I actually don't know if I'd want to get in with you. And I said, mate, I don't know if I want to get in with me. Um, but anyway, we, they flew up one of their senior guys from Melbourne and um, took me for a flight. And an hour later, they said, mate, here's your licence. Was, so. was it scary for you on how familiar it became very quickly? Oh, yeah, it was. I, I thought I'd need a hell of a lot of work. And you, it's like riding a bike. Yeah. If, if I said you don't get on a bike again for the next 20 years or don't drive a manual. And then I said, here's a manual. It'd take you like, what, a minute? And you'd yeah, go, yeah. You, no. you, mate, I was sweating like a bitch when I hopped <laughs> in that chopper. And it was February, but holy shit, I, I had 
drips all out. I was like a perspiring mess. And so I was nervous. I was yeah. as nervous as all fuck. And I thought, oh, my God, I hope I don't kill the instructor and me. But, yeah, at the end of it, I thought, shit, it's actually really not that big a deal. So the only thing is just getting hit in the books, you know, airspace, understanding rules, regulations again, um, and emergencies in the thing. But the physical flying may never changes. So yeah. Good on you. That would have so been yeah. really ex- exhilarating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, you know, if anyone wants a pub crawl around South East Queensland, let me know. <laughs> like, do pub crawls, wine tours. <laughs> I've actually made a, 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 a decree. I'm like, I'm not fucking flying in helicopters yeah, anymore. Yeah. I've, I've done a few trips. and uh, You don't me, have to jump out of me this and one. Fucking, <laughs> me and helicopters are done. <laughs> just, just in case you're wondering. So when I said no, I'm like, no, no offence, Intended. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that from my wife all the time. Uh, moving on. Uh, so we we touched before on your highlight of your your flying career, and obviously jumping into business. That's that's a pretty substantial sort of you know yep. left and right of arc. What's been the highlight of your business career? Mm, I, He's still here. Yeah, yeah. Probably making <laughs> it. No. Yeah, surviving. <laughs> um, oh, I, again, I'd say the people. Yep. Like it's just. It's like everything. Like if you get up to go to work and you go do the same job behind a computer, not interacting with anybody, I'd lose my mind. Yeah, fuck that. And so probably the highlight is seeing the success, um, meeting new people. Like every day, like, you know, it's like you guys. Almost every week I could – there's probably five people that I'd never met before that i go meet again. And I know for you guys that's in, you know, the investment space. For me it's in someone – that we're managing their property. I've never met them. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm speaking to them. I'm either doing a Zoom call and we're talking about how we're going to sell and strategies around their property. You know, like, so again, I I could easily sit here and say, yeah, the success of the business is, and still being here is probably the highlight, but really it's, it's all about the people. And, and I still enjoy going to work. You know, like yeah. someone said to me, hey, if you won a lotto, would you, wouldn't you just sell the business and leave? And I go, no, I don't think I would. I don't know what yeah. I'd do. Yeah. Like, yeah. hear that, yeah. Luke? I'm yeah. not fucking leaving. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> if I win lotto, I'll give it to him and he can fuck <laughs> off then. <laughs> That's one of those things where I think about Maslow's hierarchy needs. And I was the same. Once you've got enough to keep yeah. it, keep the machine rolling on, what else is then, what else light, lights your fire? Yeah. And yeah. To, to your point for me, the bit I love most about still being a very active coach here at Axon is literally meeting new people and dissecting and understanding their circumstances and seeing if you can help them. Yeah, it's fucking it's, rewarding. It's, it, and no call is ever the same. Yeah. In fact, they're so uniquely and different and in a very, very special way. Yeah. It fucking keeps you on your toes. It does. Oh, yeah. And, it does. And, and not even in the work environment, but then those ones that you do catch up socially. Like, yeah. Oh, my wife and I, we love socialising. So our house just turns in. We have 40 people around on weekends. Like, yeah. So that's just her. She just – if she's not with people, if it's just her and I, she's like, fucking hell, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh, okay, okay, thanks. I really wanted to come out and have a romantic night with I you. But, you know, too. I'll invite 30 people with us next time. And she goes, yeah, that's me. You know, that's what I want. So I've, I've learned a lot about Tammy today. Oh, <laughs> mate, yeah. So she – so – Again, it's it's the people, but it's the social stuff. It's yeah. it's being involved with them. You know, they tell them their stories, and you find out what they've succeeded in and stuff. Like it's 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 really good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Where to from here, mate? What's uh, what's the next few years hold for you? Not back to flying in the army, is it? Any more Shit, any more no. kids? Any more kids on the horizon? Think, no, no, no more kids. No yeah, more kids. Yeah, yeah. No, I you couldn't have said that. No, fast enough, mate. I can give. How like, old is how old the brood now? No, uh, 19, 18, 16, and oh yeah, thirteen. Yeah, that's fucking done. I know, mate. When I, I, just a little bit of a side thing. When um, Georgie was born, my youngest, thirteen, my wife came home and she said, "I'm pregnant," and of course I answered it like most men. I went, "Who oh, too? Fuck no, oh, no, no!" I said, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> I was like, "Who too?" <laughs> yeah, sure. I should have thought of that. No. <laughs> so anyway, the next day she goes, "Where are you going?" And I said, "Well, I'm going in to see the doctor. I'm getting a snip." And she goes, "Well, you can't yet." I went, "What do you mean?" She goes, "Well, well what if the birth doesn't go through?" And I went. Well, That's then we have I'm three. Yeah. <laughs> Safe. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, she forced me. I don't know. Women must I'm, must be soft. But anyway, I just said, okay, no worries. I won't do it. So anyway, the day after Georgie was born, I said, I'm going. So Georgie was at home, healthy little baby. And I said, I'm out of here. Where are you going? I'm going to see the doc again for the snip. As briefed. Yep. And, and she <laughs> goes. As briefed nine months <laughs> earlier. I know. And I said, um, I've got a choice of a general or a uh, local. And she goes, what are you doing? And I said, well, are you going to be able to pick me up? And she said, I just had a child. How's get fucked sound? <laughs> yeah. So I looked at her and said, I guess I'm having the local and I'm driving myself home. Yeah. yeah. And she said, yes, that's what you're doing. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that, that smell of burning skin coming up from your scrotum, if, they oh. haven't, if you haven't had it before, ladies and gents, is cool. one to remember. 
Oh. So yeah. I got it done anyway. two years ago, and Fran doesn't know yet. And we've been trying for a kid for two years. So it's been <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. No, here's the, here's Smart the good man. thing: is that sh- she will she'll never know because it's never. just the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> the three of us and <laughs> the fucking the world, the world, the world. Uh, but, so um, anyway, what was your question? No, I forgot. No, no, no. no. Oh, no we're two from here. <laughs> yeah, I love, um, I just love seeing if someone who joined the military provided a very important and high level capability within transition. And like, you haven't just found your new purpose. You're like, yep. and this is the way I feel anyway. Our time in the military aside, doing what we're doing here now, do you feel this is why you were put on the earth and to help people in this particular endeavor? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, but I think military people love helping people because it's in like the best exercises I ever did were the real ones going to flood floods or something that meant something like you go up and do you know Shoalwater Bay or something and it's like oh there's a Missourian tank over there and I go no there's fucking not (laughs) I go yeah there is and I go there's fucking no Missourian tank there mate I can see you know like and so that it's just just mind numbing but when you go to do a real live flood you know evacuate people whatever in helicopters or get soldiers on the ground whatever it may be that is where that spirit is like wow i'm helping people yeah. and so i don't think that changes um whether it's in your business or you know the military and i think that's where your client base as well that they'd be similar ethos um and that's why they're so good to deal with yeah you know, yeah it's a real people. real pleasure isn't it Luke, just to speak to people and like to be fair not everyone's coachable you would have come across that like has, has it been my wife has it been <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought i've learned a lot about you tammy there's another one um tell it because not every client that comes yeah. in is the right fit for us. They think they know better, or they're not coachable, or they've got a preconceived idea, or yeah, they're like, yeah. "Oh, I've got, I've got a, I've got a brand new property already. I want to buy an established one so I can do a comparison, which is yeah. fucking never going to work." Yeah. For instance, yep. Um, how have you dealt with some tricky clients over the years? Because um, they happen. Yeah, they do. I probably you, you, we haven't seen the last of them. No, no, no. And I actually have some of the the hardest ones are landlords where we're managing their property, and so we're engaged to manage their property, and they're assholes. And I don't mean that in, you know, I mean in a business no, just sense. Fucking just, just fucking say how it is. Fucking, no, 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 yeah. so, no, no they're, they're being unreasonable. They are. Stuff. And so I've got tenants in place where, you know, the dishwasher doesn't work anymore or the ducted aircon system's failed. And the landlord will say, well, I'm not fixing it. Okay, okay. Well, it was working in the state that it was when they moved in. So it has to be functioning or we have to do something to fix it. If you don't, then I can't back you when we go to QCAT. Yep. Like it's not going to work. I'm going to lose and you're going to lose. And then we get to almost arguments where they start telling me about how much the property is costing them and it's not my problem. And, and these aren't your clients. These are guys that have gone and invested in a $2 million asset and they get $600 a week rent for it. So yeah. mm. the, the yield's just not there. So it's a totally separate story. Mm. But, uh, mm. you know, that's why you coach the people you coach. So, yeah. but, and then they, I've actually gotten to the point where I've just written a letter and just saying, I am terminating his 30 days notice, the keys are on the front desk. Yep. I'm terminating your management. And, yeah. Yeah. and we tend to do that purge almost once a year. We look at our worst two landlords and we just write two letters and, and, and get rid of them because you spend 90% of your day with you know the with 10% that, yeah. of the people. I'm so, going to start doing that with our worst two employees every oh, year. I'm oh. fucked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, grab my, that mic. <laughs> I'm taking this with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lugie, let's fi- finish up, mate. What else yeah, we got? Yeah, mate. I was just, I was just going to say that you know, for that, for those listening out there, obviously, our, you know, our, our viewership is a lot of people, a lot of investors, and, and a part of that community. It's so important to be a good landlord. Like, even though you're oh, you're yeah. you're removed from engaging with you know with your tenants, it's still a fucking human being or a family living in that house. And you know, we put strategies in place about being a good landlord, about making sure that there is a, a cash allocation to be able to take care of any issues as they rise, and you know, and all that sort of stuff. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we, we we treat tenants like our landlords. We'd like to think in our office they're the same the, 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 in terms of people. Yeah. Um, I know the landlord is who we really work for and we'll always work for them. But if they don't have a tenant, a happy tenant, it causes major, major issues. So yeah. we work very hard as an agency to ensure that the tenant has our backing as well and they understand that we're, we're with them. We're there to help them. We're not yeah. the enemy. Yeah. You know, they're providing an income for our landlord. And we also want them to look after the home. Yeah, of course. You know, so, so that's a big part of what we do. Yeah. Hey, I hope you've really enjoyed the podcast today, ladies and gents. We've got Phil who's going to come and join us inside of our Axon Elite Facebook group in another couple of weeks' time. We're going to do a masterclass, mate, about Whoa. how important it is. I don't know if you've found one yet, but this I'm trying to – let's just – Make make shit up on the fly. Yeah, right. How, Sounds good. how important it is to have a top gun real estate agent that's going to work in your favour to give you the best outcome selling your property. So that's going to be you, mate, and I can't wait Beautiful. to un- unpack that a little bit more with you. Yeah, that'd um, be good. We'll be able to go into a lot more what we're just talking about, I guess. You yeah, know, into yeah. strategies, different things around it. Yeah, that'd so be awesome. really good. Yep. 
Hey, one more little thing, ladies and gents, before I head off. You might have thought, um, hey, where's a live Q&A that's been going on for about four years now, every second Wednesday? We've pressed pause for a particular reason. You can see we've reset up the um, studio here at Axon HQ. We're coming with you. We're coming to you with a brand new format. Wednesday the 13th of September is going to be the next one. Luke and I are going to be there. We're going to host it. There's going to be an opportunity for you guys to send in your in your questions beforehand. It's going to be an awesome little interactive activity. So rest assured, we haven't gone anywhere. We're just taking a little pause here to make it way better coming your way in the future. Thanks very much for listening, ladies and gents. Phil, thank you so much for being here on Axel. Pleasure. At least your story is, uh, is immense. It's powerful. It's so fantastic to see another veteran that's landed on his feet and he's, you know, kicking ass there. Um, one little thing to remember, ladies and gents, if you get out and you want to be a business owner and you don't have clients that are put, you know, toe to on the party line, don't be afraid to fucking sack them. Your world's going to be a better place. <laughs> See you, mate. See you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, mate. Good fun.